Well, there's no question who the Cinderella team is for the 2024 NCAA tournament. It's number 11 seed NC State as they've made it all the way to the Final Four. Will this incredible run continue or does it come to an end this Saturday night? I've got the answer for you, but more importantly, I'm going to let you know how to play this game between Purdue and NC State and make some money, a unique way to play this game and make some money on Saturday night. Hi, I'm Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, back here on Wager Talk TV, breaking down the first of your two Final Four matchups. And don't forget, I also have a preview of the UConn-Alabama game here on Wager Talk TV. So hit subscribe and hit the bell as well so you get instant alerts for that video. First game, though, at 6.09 Eastern on TBS is NC State-Purdue. And yes, it's not only miraculous that an 11 seed makes the Final Four, but the way that NC State has done it has been beyond incredible. Keep in mind, this team had to win the ACC tournament a couple weeks ago just to make the big dance. That means they had to win five games in five nights, including as an 11-point dog against Duke, a 10-point dog against UNC, and oh yeah, banking in a three-point shot at the buzzer of regulation to send Virginia to overtime in the second game of that five-game run. Yet it all fell into place. They made the tournament. They beat Texas Tech as an 11 seed. They got very fortunate, of course, to face Oakland, a 14 seed that upset Kentucky, and they needed overtime to beat a very mediocre Oakland team. But to NC State's credit, they held Marquette to four for 31 from three-point range. Don't know if they really held Marquette. I think Marquette more just shot terribly. And yes, they did outplay Duke. And Duke turned out to be maybe a little bit of a false favorite in that game in the Elite Eight. But now they're facing by far their toughest test of the tournament against a very good Purdue team. You know, the knock on Purdue over the years has been Matt Painter underachieving. In fact, over the past several seasons, he's 1-14 against the spread in the Big Ten Conference Tournament. The past three seasons, he has been eliminated by a double-digit seed. And how ironic, it could happen again because this is the only double-digit seed remaining. I don't think it does, though. And Purdue has a couple matchup edges in this game. Now, they're a nine-point favorite, so winning straight up, obviously, is not a very bold call. In fact, if you look at the money line, the Wager Talk Live odds screen, you'll see they're min- minus 450 to win straight up. That's over an 80% chance. Winning by more than nine, though, could be a different story. But I think the best way to play this game is actually to look at the NC State team total under 68 and a half. And there's a couple reasons why, which I'm going to give you here. First of all, both teams played a very moderate pace. So neither team is fast. They're both very moderate pace. This will have a half-court atmosphere to it. New arena as well. So this first game of the Final Four, I think the shooting, the outside shooting, could be at a bit of a disadvantage. And NC State is not a team that takes a lot of three-point shots. In fact, out of 362 Division I teams, they rank 283rd with only 33% of their shot attempts coming from beyond the arc. They get a lot of their points down low. Of course, they have big man, 6'9", graduate student DJ Burns Jr. He's going to have a tough time, though, against Zach Heedy, who's seven foot four, 300 pounds. So Burns, I do not think, has as big of a game as he normally has. His player props under are probably worth a look. Now, many states in the U.S. do not allow college player props. So that's why I didn't want to use that here on the video, but I do think Burns' player props under makes sense um, as he's going to have a tough time scoring down low. But that also translates to the NC State team total under six and a half, 68 and a half. Uh, Purdue was very fortunate from the free throw line against Tennessee. Edie had a career high 41 points. Um, a lot of those calls were questionable, so I'm not sure he's going to get the same officiating bias that he did in the Elite Eight, something to keep an eye on. Um, but once again, his defense, though, should be very strong and just putting his arms up if you saw him cut down the net after the Elite Eight win over Tennessee, he didn't need the ladder. He can basically touch the rim with a pair of scissors. Um, so all he has to do is stand upright, put his arms up, and Burns is going to have a tough time scoring down low. It's that simple. And NC State is not a team that relies heavily on the three-point shot. And then on top of that, Purdue is a very good defensive team. We know they're a good offensive team. In fact, they're either first or second of the different offensive efficiency ratings that I use. Um, but they're still 17th most efficient defense. If you look at the Ken Palms, they're now up to 15th in those rankings, or actually 16th to be exact, and they're number two in offense. NC State's still in the 40s on both offense and defensive efficiency um, in the Ken Palms. And something else I'll point out, it's not going to be a mystery who wins the national title. There are four games, four teams remaining. I'll give you a deep dive into the Alabama-UConn game. But in this game, there's only one team that has national uh, title caliber uh, attributes, and that once again would be a top nine offense, top 15 defense. And Purdue right now in the Ken Palms, is 2-16. and 16. So if they win the next couple games, most likely their defense will be top 15. NC State has no chance in the 40s. So NC State Wolfpack is not winning the national title. Will it be the fourth straight tournament in which Purdue loses to a double-digit seed? Well, we have to see. 
But I think NC State's going to struggle offensively. Now, you could look at the under for the game for that reason, but the concern I have is that Purdue could hit their free throws down the stretch, and they are a very good offensive team, as I mentioned, either first or second, depending on the different efficiency metrics you look at. So I think the safer play is to look at the defensive edge that Purdue has, and I think they can shut down Burns down low and make a non-three-point in NC State team rely on more outside shots. Take a look at the Wolfpack under 68.5 for their team total Saturday night at 6.09 Eastern. Hey, comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this game in the Final Four, Purdue and NC State. Who do you like to advance? Does the upset happen again? Can NC State keep it going? You know, only once ever has a team won five conference tournament games in five days to make the tournament. That was back in 2011. Connecticut did it. And oh, by the way, they went on to win the national championship. Now, a little bit different. UConn was a three seed that year. Keep that in mind. Um, NC State an 11 seed. Uh, but still something uh, really remarkable how the two teams that have won five straight have had monster runs and NC State is now doing it in the NCAA tournament. But comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. What are your thoughts on this game? Side total, player props, team totals. How do you want to attack it? And if you have some time, include some analysis as well so we can learn and earn and win together here on Wager Talk TV. I know we're talking college hoops, but don't forget about the NBA. I am number one all time on NBA sides in the history of wagertalk.com. And once again, this season, I'm ranked number one. In fact, as I do this video midweek, I'm 55 and 35 on all my NBA sides. 61% winners this year, up over 66 and a half units of profit. And we have several more months to go in the NBA, including the playoffs right around the corner. Playoffs alone last year were 29 and 17. And all NBA best bets in 2023 last year were 103 and 63. So I know we're talking college hoops, but there's only three tournament games remaining. There's a ton of NBA, several hundred NBA games to go. And I've got a very special promo code for this video. Get the rest of the NBA season, including the finals, the playoffs through the finals, for just $219. That's just over $2.5 a day for the rest of the NBA season. But you got to have a promo code, and that promo code's on this video only, NBA219. Once again, NBA219. NBA219 gets you the rest of the NBA season, including the playoffs and finals, for just $219. Go to the NBA all-season all pass. It's normally 280. It gets it down to 219 with promo code NBA219. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And don't forget about the daily free plays, both pro basketball and Major League Baseball. I post a free play every day. Baseball at this season has started 5-1. The only loss, a 6-4 blown lead in the ninth inning. Otherwise, we have a 6-0 start to the baseball season. Free plays and best bets off to a great start in baseball. Check out daily free plays for both basketball and baseball on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on Twitter and X as well, at Steve Merrill, 2Rs1L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X. Also post free plays throughout the week on Instagram, so follow me on IG. Once again, comment below. I read all the comments here on the videos. I reply back. Thumbs up, like, and hit subscribe and click the bell as well so you know when my UConn, Alabama video is posted. And more importantly, I will have a fade the public video for both of these games later this week on Friday. I'll let you know what side the public is on, both sides and totals. So click the bell for instant alerts when you subscribe. And stay tuned right here to Wager Talk TV for more great college and pro basketball and Major League Baseball content coming up next.